Hello, everyone. Welcome to another webinar here uh, at Get Guardian. I'm super excited for this webinar to to begin. I'm super excited to hear from our very special guests. It's going to be one heck of a session. Uh, just want to say this is the largest webinar we've ever done. Nearly 1,400 people uh, signed up for this. And as you can see, the, the chat going crazy. Uh, it's great to see that you, you, you're all here. It's fantastic to see such an interest in this topic. Um, and I'm really nervous that <laughs> because there's so many of you, but we're going to we're going to get through it. Uh, it's all going to be totally oh, fine. fine. Uh, so we had to have some very special guests here today. Uh, the webinar is a hands-on guide to runtime security for CICD pipelines with STEP security. Uh, and we are joined by uh, Varun Sharma and Ashish uh, Gurmi. And so it is, uh, it is really cool. These guys are the founders of STEP security. Uh, and they also have years of experience in this. And not only are we going to be looking at some problems, looking at some really cool information, there's going to be a lab as part of this. This is this is really going to be a hands-on webinar. Uh, so they're going to have lots of opportunity uh, to really learn some stuff and, and actually participate. So just something to know, uh, we do have prizes in this webinar. So depending on where in the world you are, will depend on the kind of prize uh, that, that you get. And how you get prizes is basically by participating, being active in the chat, asking lots of questions, participating in the polls that they came up. Um, and at the end, uh, when we send our follow-up email, just to thank you all, we'll announce who the winners of those prizes are. So please participate uh, as, as we go along. Uh, that's your best chance to win some cool swag, some cool prizes uh, from us here. So just while we're waiting, I'm seeing that there's a lot of people uh, joining. Uh, let us know in the chat whereabouts in the world you are joining from. I myself are in the Netherlands, uh, close to Amsterdam. Um, so we have that. We've got USA, we've got France, Colombia, Spain, Morocco, Germany. Oh, it's going so fast. It's hard to India, Indonesia. Algeria, UAE, Israel, Paris, Kenya, Costa Rica. Wow, this is crazy. Philippines. Ah, this is absolutely mental. Uh, this is really cool to see so many people from around the world. Romania, UK, Ghana. Wow, my wife is actually in Ghana right at this moment. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Nigeria, oh, uh, Nigeria, Lagos. We're seeing a lot of people from the African continent. That's fantastic. Canada, Chile, Brazil. Oh, wow. Really cool to see such a, a wide audience here joining us today. Uh, so just a couple of things, prerequisites. There's a couple of things that you might need for this. Um, uh, you would need a web browser, but I'm uh, presuming uh, you're on a web browser right now. If you want to participate in the labs, you'll need a GitHub account and you'll need to fork uh, this repository here. Uh, so uh, we can paste uh, the repository in the chat. You're going to have lots of opportunity to get to this uh, as well. I just wanted to give you an opportunity now. I've added a link to that in the chat. So if you want to go to that and fork, you can go ahead. Now, you don't need to participate uh, immediately on this. This is being recorded. And actually, uh, there is going to be an opportunity for you to watch this again. So if you, you know, if you can't follow along uh, entirely, or you need a little bit more time, then you can go ahead and just watch what's happening, and then watch the replay and follow along. But if you want to do it live with us, uh, you absolutely can too. And that's the way that you can do that by forking that account. It's in the chat. Um, and uh, and yeah, and you can go ahead and, and and do that. So I want to talk a little bit before we get going uh, about why this is such an important topic and why at Git Guardian uh, we're so interested in this. So the guests that we have today are from Step Security. That's a fantastic company that's emerging, um, and I think by evident of how many people are actually on this webinar it shows just what an important uh, topic this is. Uh, but uh, at uh, at Step Security, it's all about securing the, the CI CD pipelines. And this is something that Git Guardian has been really interested in as well. Um, recently, we've released our new uh, product called Honey Tokens. 
And these are fake credentials to uh, to trap attackers. Now, we've done some webinars on these Honey tokens, how to use them and how they can be part of supply chain security and security in your CI CD pipeline. But there's an important distinction, which is why I'm so excited to have Step Security with us today. Uh, and that is, is that Honey tokens are really part of an overall defense of supply chain security. What Honey tokens can do is they can alert you when someone's broken into your systems. They can alert you when your areas have been compromised. But in addition to that, you also need a way of being able to actually prevent security incidents, like blocking security incidents, being able to prevent malicious packages, being able to prevent those calls. Now, Honey Tokens can let you know when this happened, but they can't actually stop it. Step Security, on the other hand, and the lab that we're going to do at the moment is all about how we can actually prevent malicious actors from getting inside our CI CD pipelines. So it's a really, really important uh, topic um, and something that I'm super excited uh, to, to get into. All right. So that's pretty much it uh, from, from me. Uh, I think it's now time for the main event. So I'm going to hand over uh, to uh, Varun to uh, share your screen and I'm going to let you uh, take over. So I'm just going to stop sharing mine. Awesome. Sorry, Ashish. I got, I got, uh, <laughs> I got a run. Ashish, I'm going to hand it over to you now to share your screen and start the presentation. So uh, welcome, uh, everyone. Uh, if you've enabled the emojis, we can send some emojis to welcome Ashish to the stage and present uh, on this webinar. There we are. I'm loving it uh, for the first time. So Ashish, I'm going to leave and turn it over to you. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll start this slide. So welcome to the webinar on runtime security for CICD pipelines. And, uh, you know, Mackenzie has already mentioned that this has a hands-on lab, so I'll not go into that. A quick introduction. My name is Varun Sharma, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Step Security. Uh, Step Security is a leader in CICD security, uh, and we are on a mission to build the world's best CICD security platform. Uh, before starting Step Security, I was at Microsoft for 15 years. Uh, I was part of the Azure security team. Uh, Ashish, you can go next. Hi, everyone. It's so great to have you all join us for this webinar. My name is Ashish Kurmi, and I'm a co-founder and CTO of Step Security. I have about 13 years of industry experience across Plaid, Uber, and Microsoft. And throughout my career, I have primarily built low-friction security solutions for developers. So this is the agenda we have today for our webinar. To set the context for our hands-on labs, we'll briefly go through CI-CD security and uh, step security hardened runner, which would take about 15 minutes, and then we'll jump into uh, our hands-on labs. So let's look. So let's start the first section, and uh, let's actually uh, do an interactive exercise. So on this slide, we have shown a typical CI-CD pipeline. So in this case, it's a GitHub Actions workflow, and it consists of three steps. So at line 53, we are checking out the source code. And then at line 56, we we'll log into our AWS ECR account. And then finally, at line 64, we build a Docker container image, and we push it to our AWS ECR account. And I would love to know from your perspective, what can go wrong here? And uh, you know you can provide your input in the chat area. Uh, so CI/CD is a high-risk environment because CI/CD, first of all, is a high-privileged environment. As you can see at line sixty, it typically holds admin cloud credentials because it needs to manage cloud environments. In addition, it also produces production builds uh, that run in the cloud environment. And the key threats in the CI-CD environment are related to the use of untrusted third party and open source code in this high privileged environment. So uh, just like any modern day programming language uh, 
all CI/CD providers have a rich ecosystem of open source and third party components. So when you build a CI/CD pipeline today, you don't start from scratch. You essentially assemble existing open source and third party components to achieve your CI/CD objectives. And this slide you know summarizes the key threats in the CI/CD environment which are related to the uh, malicious misuse of the privileges i described in the previous slide so they are uh, exfiltration of source code and ci cd secrets from the ci cd environment and tampering of release builds and this is typically done through poisoned workflows and a workflow can be poisoned either by compromising a dependency or by a compromised build tool now uh, malicious cyber actors uh, you know also realize the value of going after uh, ci cd environments and recently uh, you know there has been a sharp rise in the number of ci cd security attacks to put these uh, threats into perspective let's look at two such uh, ci cd security attacks and let's start with the code cop breach so Code Cop is a very popular service for measuring and tracking code coverage. As an engineering as an engineering best practice, a lot of organizations you know have internal targets around code coverage. So when they run uh, either unit tests or integration tests in CI CD, they typically use Code Cop to measure and track progress on these engineering objectives. So in the Code Cop breach the code cov bash uploader script was maliciously modified so when you run code cov in ci cd it produces a detailed report of code coverage and this bash uploader script uh, essentially uploads this detailed report to the code cov api so after uh, compromising the bash uploader script in january 21 these attackers silently persisted in the code cov environment for the next 3 months and during this time period any time a code cop customer ran code cop in their ci cd it executed the attacker controlled malicious code as well in 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 the customer ci cd environment and what this malicious code did was it read all the environment variables and then it exfiltrated it to an attacker controlled remote endpoint and once the attackers you know had access to these environment variables uh, they were able to steal proprietary source code and other high value assets such as uh, cloud admin cloud credentials thousands of code cop customers were impacted because of this breach and many large scale organizations publicly announced that their ci cd was compromised because of this breach you know companies such as twilio hashi corp and rapid7 uh, in fact Hashicorp's signing key was stolen in this breach. Uh, McKinsey has uh, written an excellent uh, Git Guardian blog post about this breach, and I would highly recommend you check it out if you are in interested in learning more. Uh, now let's look at the Solar Winds breach. Uh, Solar Winds is a very popular vendor for networking solutions, and in this case. Uh, the attackers compromised the build server which was used for uh, producing solar winds software updates so in this case when the uh, uh, when the build server was compromised uh, the attackers ran uh, a utility called uh, sunspot which is a malicious piece of code which was constantly running uh, in the background you know on the build server and this uh, malicious code was capable of detecting when a software update is about to be produced so as part of the first step you know um, in this software update pipeline uh, the remote source code repository was cloned and a local copy was created so uh, this sunspot malware you know when it detected that uh, a software up update is about to be produced it maliciously tampered a local source code file and it injected you know another ma malware called sunburst into it and then the software update was produced using this infected copy of source code and since the software update was produced through the official uh, you know ci cd pipeline it produced all the uh, release criteria such as the you know the binary was signed um and after 
this infected software update was published, it slowly got rolled out to all of their customer environments. 18,000 SolarWinds customers were impacted because of this breach, including about 90% of the Fortune 500 companies and many uh, US government agencies, such as all five branches of the US military. Uh, this breach was so severe that after SolarWinds made this uh, disclosure, their stock price went down by almost 25%. So, uh, poll question. Uh, we would love to know which CICD platform do you use? And you can provide your input uh, in the poll tab. So... Uh, as we saw, CICD security attacks are on the rise and attackers are actively going after these uh, high privileged environments. Let's see how the industry is responding to it, responding to it. So the industry realizes the need to protect CICD security. And, you know, we are catching up on this area and, you know, we have shown two examples here. So the first one is CISA, which stands for Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, and NSA, which stands for National Security Agency. They recently released a joint uh, guidance on defending CICD environments. Uh, NIST, which is again another US government agency, has started drafting guidelines for CICD security. There are also a few industry regulatory bodies, such as CIS, uh, you know, they have started including requirements related to CICD security in their benchmarks. Let's double click on the CISA guidance and let's see what they recommend. So CISA recommends that the CICD network must be segmented and all the traffic that is uh, either coming into CICD or going out of CICD must be filtered. They recommend using endpoint detection and response or EDR tools in CICD to assist with investigations and forensics, CISA recommends maintaining uh, tamper-proof audit logs. And finally, to reduce the CICD attack surface, CISA recommends eliminating unnecessary applications from CICD. There are several security solutions that can provide these capabilities in other non-CICD environments. So for example, there are many EDR solutions that work really well in, in the cloud environment. Similarly, there are many vendor solutions that can eliminate unnecessary applications from source code repositories. But when you run these existing tools in CI CD, they don't work. And the primary reason is that, you know, these tools were not built for CI CD in the first place. So they understand CI CD context. This event in CI CD might be completely irrelevant outside of it. So, for example, in the solar winds breach, we saw that a source code file was tampered maliciously. Now, this is a significant event, you know, when you observe it in the CI CD deployment, uh, in your CI CD deployment pipeline. But for a typical workload, it's completely irrelevant. Second, uh, most of the uh, runtime solutions today primarily focus on anomaly detection. And it makes sense because a typical cloud workload is, is highly unpredictable. So, you know, you have to use machine learning and AI to figure out the interesting security events, you know, from these uh, unpredictable environments. On the other hand, CICD is highly predictable because it does the same thing again and again. You know, it downloads the source code from a well-known location. It, uh, you know, then pushes the software artifact to another well-known location. It manages your cloud environment, which is again hosted at a well-known location. So a better security strategy for CI CD is to create a baseline of the expected behavior and then uh, flag any deviations from it. Third, uh, CICD can be hosted in a variety of ways. You know, you can use a completely managed uh, uh, SaaS CICD provider. On the other hand, you can also host CICD yourself. And, uh, or, you know, or, you know, it can either use like a combination of these two options. And existing solutions are not versatile enough to cover all these CICD uh, 
hosting scenarios. Uh, another poll question, uh, we would love to know how do you host your uh, CICD platform? Do you use a self-hosted, uh, 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 do you self-host it yourself or do you use a completely managed uh, provider? And uh, just while we're waiting for those poll questions to come through, those that are interested, the results are from the, the, from the polls, we've had uh, 138 answers. By far the most popular CI CD platform is GitHub Actions at around 59%, followed by GitLab, then Jenkins, then Azure DevOps, and Circle CI coming in at 3% in fourth position. Which is, uh, I found that interesting. I, 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 I talk about our Circle CI and everything so much that I really thought that would have been, uh, would have been higher up, but really interesting. Um, and yeah, make sure you submit your, your, your vote. The polls tab is next to the questions tab. Uh, you can see it in there and you'll see the results once you submit, uh, submit your answer. Currently, uh, we're looking at about 60% hosted by the provider and 40% uh, hosted, uh, host, self-hosted, but lots more votes still coming in. I'll leave it back to you, Ashish. Awesome. So uh, as we saw the industry is responding to CI CD security attacks and you know we went over uh, security recommendations to protect CI CD. Now let's look at how step security hardened runner can help you comply with these security uh, recommendations. Step security hardened runner is a purpose built CI CD security platform and it is based on our learnings from the past CI CD security attacks. So uh, build servers are typically called runners. And since the platform strengthens it or hardens it, it's called hardened runner. And that's the story behind our product name. So these are the key uh, hardened runner features. Hardened runner contextualizes all security observability events. So anytime it makes an observation or it detects a runtime event, it maps it back to the exact CICD step that produced it. Uh, Harden runner can create a baseline for the expected runtime behavior for your CI CD pipelines, and then it can help you monitor any deviations from it. We have built a CI CD native network firewall, which is an abstraction on top of the underlying infrastructure network firewall and the host firewall. So once you define your criteria to filter uh, network traffic, no matter where your workflow is running, either it's whether it's running in a vendor managed environment or whether it's running in your own environment, hardened runner can uh, effectively apply uh, those network filtering controls. And finally, to protect the integrity of the build process, it also has a real time file integrity monitoring system. Harden Runner is uh, free for open source projects that are using GitHub hosted runners. Uh, for enterprise uh, use cases, it also supports proprietary source code repositories and self hosted runners. Harden Runner was released about 18 months ago. And since then, we have seen rapid adoption of Harden Runner by open source projects. We recently crossed 1,500 open source repositories that are using Harden Runner. And these are, you know, uh, and these are important open source uh, projects. So we have, you know, uh, open source repositories from industry giants such as Google, Microsoft, Mastercard, and Datadog uh, that are using Harden Runner. In addition, several not-for-profit software foundations such as Node.js and Kubernetes are also using Harden Runner to secure their CI/CD. And uh, CISA has also started using Harden Runner in their uh, public repositories. So with that, let's uh, jump into the hands-on lab. So before we get started with the hands-on labs, you know, quick reminder that uh, you need a GitHub account and uh, you know a browser. If you haven't already, you can fork the GitHub Actions code repository. So let me go ahead and share my screen.
Okay, can you, uh, Ashish, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see it. Okay. So before we go into the hands-on labs, let me give a quick demo of Hardened Runner. So what you see here is the Hardened Runner repository. And the best way to understand what it does is to look at some of the projects that are using it. So let's look at a couple of them. The first one is from CISA. And what you see here are runtime security insights from a particular workflow run for a GitHub Actions workflow. So here under the workflow, you can see it says build.yaml. So those who are not familiar with GitHub Actions, uh, you know, it's a CI CD platform and you can write the uh, pipeline as code file in YAML. And that's what you see here. And in this case, uh, at line 25, uh, the step security hardened runner GitHub action has been used. And this is what uh, you know uh, does the runtime security analysis. And as a result, you see those insights. So this, this is a open source project from uh, the Cybersecurity and infrastructure, uh, infrastructure Security Agency, CISA. And for public repositories, these insights are public, so anybody can see them. Uh, and this is what you know Ashish was mentioning when he said contextualized uh, runtime security insights. So as you can see, this, this is telling you what is the outbound calls that are being made as part of this particular workflow run. And we'll go into more detail later. In addition, you also see a recommended policy. So instead of relying on anomaly detection, it's actually telling you that these are the calls that were made. And now you can set a recommended policy or a block policy for this particular workflow. So if it runs, and if there's a call to any other endpoint, that will get blocked. So now uh, let's look at another example and uh, where you know a block policy is being used. And this project is, again, a, a public repository from a Google Cloud platform. And in this case, if you see, there is a block policy being used. Now, if I go to the lint.yaml file, which is the GitHub Actions workflow in this case, on line 19, you'll see that it uses the step security hardened runner action. Uh, and on 22, line 22, you can see that the egress policy now is set to block mode. And after that, you can see what are the allowed endpoints which have been specified using domain name. So if there's a call to any other endpoint, uh, uh, Harder None is going to block that. And we can see here that in this run, there was actually a call which was not in the allowed list to rubygems.org and that was blocked. In this case, it was not a malicious call. It was just missed in the list. Uh, but for example, in the case of the Kodkov breach, when credentials were exfiltrated, uh, that would have been an actual incident which would have been blocked. So that was a quick demo of Hardened Runner. And now let's go and do the hands-on. Uh, so if you haven't already forked it, you can uh, you know, now fork the GitHub Actions GOAT repository. This is like an educational project where you can do hands-on labs. In order to fork it, you can click on this fork, uh, you know, drop down here and then click on create a new fork. And in this case, I'm creating a fork, you know, under my uh, GitHub account. And let's go ahead and click on create fork. So once you fork this, what I would suggest is that you can just duplicate this tab so that we can read through the labs in one of the tabs and actually follow the steps in the second one. Now, if you've reached till here, what you need to do next is to actually enable GitHub Actions on this forked repository. So if you go to the actions tab, which should be the third tab from the top, so after code, pull request, and actions, if you go to the actions tab, you will see that there's a green button there. It says, I understand my workflows. Go ahead and enable them. So by default, actions are not enabled on a fork. 
So you can go ahead and click this and it should enable GitHub Actions on this fork. And you should see a list of uh, available workflows uh, on the left side. So now let's go ahead and start with the first hands-on lab. The first one that we will do is the first one in this table, which says GitHub Actions Runtime Security Filter Egress Network Traffic. So you can go ahead and click on that, and it's going to have a set of steps that we are going to follow. Now these, you know, this hands-on lab is going to use GitHub hosted runner. Uh, the first one is about network monitoring without hardened runner. So in this case, we are just going to see what happens when you run a workflow which doesn't have hardened runner. And you know, by default, these workflows and in general pipelines in any CI CD provider are not really monitored for security observability. And that's what this lab is going to show. So if you go to the actions tab now, you should see a hosted network monitoring without hardened runner. You should see a workflow there. Uh, network monitoring without hardened runner. And if you want to see what this workflow is, you can click on this YAML file, which is going to run when we run this workflow. So this is uh, running on Ubuntu latest, which is the GitHub hosted runner. And it's checking out code on line nine. And then on line 13, it's doing an NPM install. And then it's publishing you know, to the uh, GitHub container registry. So it's a typical workflow. And now we'll just go ahead and run this. And if you haven't actually used GitHub Actions before, this is also a good, good chance to just get familiar with it. So let me go ahead and run this. And you should start seeing that a workflow is running now. And what you see here are the build logs. And the purpose of this this particular lab is just to understand what do you get when you run a workflow and what do you not get, which is that you don't really have any network monitoring by default. So you don't really know what kind of outbound calls are being made. Uh, you know, so you know the code was checked out, you know, there was an NPM install and there is a publish to a registry which is happening right now, but you don't really know what are the calls being made. So we let this be here. And let's start with the next lab, which is network monitoring with hardened runner. So now you're going to look at the difference. Uh, and now you should be able to see, as you follow this, you should be able to see the outbound calls. And when you do try to spot something interesting. So now I'm going to run this lab. You can go to the actions tab again. And on the left side, look for hosted network monitoring with hardened runner. So now we are going to run this workflow. And if you want to see what this workflow has, you can click on this hosted network monitoring hr.yaml file. And now you will notice that, as I had showed in the earlier demo, on line nine, there is a GitHub action, step security hardened runner, which has been added. and on line 11, you can see that the egress policy has been set to audit. So this is how you typically use it at the start when you don't know what are the endpoints that it's calling. So, so now let's go ahead and run this. So the network monitoring with hardened runner, you can click on here and run workflow. And now let's see what, what output we get. So in the build log, you can see that the first step now is, uh, you know, after setup job, it's, it's doing a pre hardened runner and then a hardened runner step. And when you click on that, you should actually see a link to where it says view security insights and recommended policy. So this is where the security insights for this particular run will become available after this workflow complete, completes. So now if you're following along in your workflow run, you can go to the step where it says 
uh, run step security hardened runner you should see a link and this link will have your own fork uh, repository mentioned there and you can click on this and once you click on this you should be seeing something like this you know these these uh, security insights from that particular workflow run so let's go through these and see what this is telling us right so in the first step which was a checkout we now know that an outbound call was made to github.com which is expected because it needs to uh, download the source code and then in the npm install step it's making a call to registry.npmjs.org which is also expected for it to download the uh, uh, dependencies but after that you see that there's a call to attacker.com and this is uh, you know this is really suspicious and interesting uh, and it's not really clear why this is happening right because all we had done was to run npm install and this is certainly not expected that it's going to make a call to attacker.com now in a real scenario it's not going to be that obvious uh, but for example in the code cov breach an outbound call like this sh should have been spotted uh, going to a direct ip address so in the code cov breach the outbound call that the attacker made was to a direct ip address and that would have clearly shown up here so now let's try to investigate you know why is this call being made where is this call being made to attacker.com so if you click on this npm link uh, npm install link it will tell you the exact step where this call was made so now we, we know that this is where it's doing cd and then source exfiltration demo and npm install so in order to investigate this let's go into our uh, fork and look into source so there's the source folder and the exfiltration demo folder and this is where npm install is being run so if you click on the package.json file, what npm install does is that installs dependencies that are mentioned in the package.json file. So here on line seven, you see that there's a dependency step security malware simulator, which is actually pointing to a file, which is also in this repository, which is under malware simulators, exfiltration simulator. So let's go there. So just below this, there's a malware simulators and exfiltration simulator. And in here, there is a package.json file. And uh, if you notice, this has a pre-install step. So when npm install is run for every dependency that it installs, if there is a pre-install step, it's going to run that. So it's going to run the code here, which is node compile.js. And if you click on compile.js, you'll see that on line four, this is where an outbound call is being made to attacker.com. And this is the call that Harden Runner is actually able to monitor and tell you. Now, this is just a you know, uh, um, simulator, so it's not, not doing anything but just making the call. But in a real scenario, this could be exfiltrating source code from the build server, or it could be exfiltrating the environment variables, which have secrets, uh, like was the case in the code cop breach. So uh, that was the lab for network monitoring with Harden Runner. So if, if you had gone into you know, the, the exfiltration demo and simulator, just try to get back to this lab page. Um, also, let me just you know, pause for a minute and check Ashish uh, McKenzie, are there any uh, questions or, or anything to clarify up till that I can help? I, I can't actually see the chat window. <laughs> No problem. Yeah, there's a there's a a, a bunch of uh, really great questions that have come through. Uh, I just want to reassure everyone. I, I know a lot of people were were trying to follow along. Um, just to reassure everyone that uh, there will be a recording made of this available. So if you got lost or a little bit or you need to redo something, the recording is going to be available. So you can uh, you know do, do that there. I, again uh, if you've got if you got a little bit stuck. Um, but uh, just to, to answer that, if we have uh, if if we have uh, time for for a couple of questions now, um, or we can wait uh, till the very end. It's up to you, uh, Laurent. Yeah, let's wait till the end. Let's go through the labs, and we can do the questions at the end. Sounds good. Okay, so the next lab is about network filtering with Harden Runner. So up till now, 
we were able to monitor the outbound traffic. Uh, but that's not, you know, that's why that's great. We can actually do better and prevent these calls from being made in the first place. So let's see how we can do that. So if you're following along on the hands-on lab, you can go to your actions tab and uh, look for the network monitoring. So under hosted network monitor, uh, network filtering with hardened runner. So you should see a workflow there, network filtering with hardened runner. And if you look at the workflow, you'll see that in this case, uh, you know, on line 10, the hardened runner action is being used. In addition, you have a egress policy block. So when you see these insights, you also have a policy which is recommended based on the calls that were made. And that policy has been set in here. Now, obviously, attacker.com has not been included here. And the idea is that when you do a baseline, you know, everything that you see there should be as expected. And if not, you need to investigate. So here, this is what we expect you know, uh, calls for this particular workflow. So that's what's been set in the block mode. And now let's go ahead and run this workflow. So hosted network filtering with Harden Runner. And what should ideally happen is that you should see the call to attacker.com getting blocked. So let's see what happens now. Yeah, so here you can see that the npm install step has failed and you can see that there was a connection refused uh, uh, you know in the error in the build log so if you go back to your uh, insights page you will see that there is a arrow here which says view all runtime security insights uh, you can you can click on this and this will actually show you a view of all the uh, workflow runs across this repository. You can also look at them across your organization and get a security runtime security summary. So here you can see it says one blocked call. And if I click on this, uh, you can see that this call to attacker.com has been blocked. So if this, you know, the, if this kind of tech was in place at the time of the code cough breached thousands of customers that got their credentials exfiltrated, this would have been a call to a direct IP address, which would have been blocked. And all of that uh, could have been avoided. So that was the lab for network filtering. Uh, there, you know, there, there is another part here around running this on self-hosted runners, but you can't do a, a hands-on lab for that. So what I'll do is I'll come back and if there's time, I can do a demo but let's continue the lab and let's do the lab for file monitoring. So to do the lab for file monitoring on the left side, you should see a file monitor source code MD. So you can click on that file, which has the lab for detecting file tampering during the build. So again, if you're following along, this is monitor source code MD. Uh, it's a, uh, couple of files above the one where we are we were at initially which was a strict outbound traffic so you can click on this monitor source code md and let's do a lab for detecting file tampering now here the first one is file monitoring without hardened runner but you know as you know there isn't any monitoring by default on a ci cd server or a build server and we've already seen that when we did you know this uh, network monitoring without hardener so let's not run this because all it's going to tell us is that there are build logs but you're not going to see any insights let's follow this one which is file monitoring with harden runner so to do this if you go back to your actions tab you should see one which says hosted file monitoring with harden runner so you should see this workflow file monitoring with hardened runner and this is the workflow file here so if you want to look at what's happening here you can click on that and here again on line nine we have the hardened runner github action it's being run in uh, audit mode and so let's go ahead and run this file monitoring with hardened runner and let's see what happens right so in 
the uh, network scenario, we saw that there was a call to attacker.com. And in this file scenario, let's see if you can spot something interesting. So I'm just waiting for this workflow run to finish because the insights become available after it finishes. It's taking a little longer to publish to the registry for this one for some reason. This is the, the curse of the live demo. Uh, it always feels like it takes forever <laughs> when you're doing it. Um, uh, but while we're waiting for that, we could uh, uh, answer uh, a, uh, a couple of questions while this is uh, this is happening. Uh, and uh, one of the uh, one of the questions that uh, uh, has come up that I figured it would come up is: uh, Does Step Security support or plans to support other CI/CD environments other than GitHub Actions? Um, yeah, so we definitely plan to support. Uh, you know, additional CI CD providers. Um, and, you know, we are in fact looking for design partners and early adopters. So if you are interested in that, you know, definitely reach out to us. Excellent. Uh, I see we're done. So I'll disappear again. <laughs> yeah. So, so now let's, uh, you can either click on this link, which is under the hardened runner step, or if you have these insights open, you can go back. And uh, yeah, this time I actually didn't see uh, a file modification, which is uh, interesting. Maybe I, I don't know if I ran the right one file monitoring with Harden Runner. Yeah, maybe let, let me run it again. I don't know if anybody saw an event for there, but uh, what you should see here did you are you looking at the correct inside page so if you go back and refresh the page uh the inside page if you go back and refresh it i want to make sure that we are looking at the correct inside page yeah we are at the right one actually i can maybe show this from a few hours back so in here uh you know you you can see that there is a file that's being shown in red color and uh, this is what should have happened in that demo. So this shows up when a file has been overwritten during the build process. So in this case, the index.js file has been overwritten during the build process, which is not typical of a release workflow. So when you are doing a release workflow, your source code gets downloaded on the build server and it shouldn't really be changed after that. But this is a, uh, an attack technique, you know, which is uh, which was used in the Solar Winds breach, and in fact, in another one called Event Stream incident, where the source code is modified on the build server, uh, because this is really hard to detect. You know, you would find that your source code is the same that you know in the repository hasn't been altered, but it has been altered during the build, and the only way to detect this is to actually do real time file monitoring. So this is, you know, what should have come up. Let me see if this has run again. Yeah, it's still not come up, but uh, <laughs> not sure why. Let's let's look at the you know, the simulator again. So if you're curious why that file is being modified, 
uh, it's because similar to the exfiltration simulator, there's actually a backdoor simulator. And in, the, in that case, there's a compile.js file, which is running as a pre-installed step. And, in, and that is what is overwriting uh, the index.js file. So that was, uh, you know, the the lab for file monitoring. And um, what I'll do is I'll just take maybe a couple of minutes to show how this looks like for a self-hosted runner. And you know, in terms of the CI/CD native firewall, what what does that really mean? So um, let me go to the actual GitHub Actions code project. So on the GitHub Actions code project, we have a, a self-hosted runners using Actions Runner Controller, you know, which is a way to run self-hosted runners on a Kubernetes instance. And that is, you know, gaining a lot of popularity across different CI CD providers where you can actually run your builds on a Kubernetes cluster and different jobs run you know, on a different pod, and then that pod gets deleted. So the advantage you have for a self-hosted runner is that you don't have to add the, the hardened runner action to each job. You, know, you just install uh, what we call as the arc hardened runner daemon set on the Kubernetes cluster, and it will just automatically monitor both file and network events. So in this case, you can see that there's a self-hosted uh, runner. It's running on self-hosted. You don't have the hardened runner GitHub action. But still, if you look at the insights, you know they will look just the same. And uh, you know the hardened runner daemon set is able to, which uses eBPF on the Kubernetes cluster, is able to um, do the same kind of file and network monitoring and also network filtering. Uh, uh, yeah, so here again, you can see the call to attacker.com. In addition, because you own the infrastructure, you own your Kubernetes cluster, you can also set up a secure by default cluster level policy, which applies to all jobs across all workflows. So you can have a default policy. Um, we do have a demo here where the default policy does not allow calls to direct IP addresses. So in, in this case, there was a call to uh, a direct IP address, you know, which is again common for uh, attackers to use to evade DNS monitoring. And in this case, because of the secure by default policy on the Kubernetes cluster that applies to each job, uh, this call is actually not allowed. So, uh, you know, again, these labs and these demos for Actions Runner Controller, they're all available on GitHub Actions Code. So you can come at any time and, you know, have a look at this. You can fork the repo and try the labs, plus the recording will also be available. So with that, I'll go ahead and stop sharing. And, uh, you know, we can see if, if there's time for more questions. Awesome. There we are. Uh, all right. Question time. So we have uh, quite a few questions. Uh, thank you so much for that. It's it's really a treat to get a, a hands-on lab uh, in these. And again, I, I know that the, it can always be a little bit tricky if, if you miss a part and uh, you're not sure. But uh, like we've said before, we can uh, we will we will be sharing the, the recordings. But let's have a look at some of the questions uh, that we have uh and uh go ahead uh okay the first one how, how does the network filter of hardened runner work is it dns based and could it be bypassed uh i.e directly uh, uh talking to an ip yeah so the the network filter you know it, it has a dns filter as well as uh you know a firewall for direct calls to ip address so one of the techniques that attackers use is dns exfiltration and so if you try to do that uh, the dns uh, you know proxy is going to block that and if you try to make an ip call to a direct ip address which is not in the allowed list of the uh, of the dns names then that will also be blocked so the only ip addresses that are allowed 
are the ones that resolve the domain names that have been allowed. And that's why in the, for example, in the, uh, you know, demo for self-hosted, you could see that in fact, the secure by default policy itself doesn't allow calls to direct IP address. So it has to be something which was in the allowed list for the domain. Got it, got it. Uh, here's an interesting question, one that I've had too, by, uh, Morris. Uh, are self-hosted CI/CD platforms a little bit more secure? What's your opinion? Yes, that's a that's an interesting question. You know, what we've seen is that a lot of enterprises, especially the ones that are security conscious, actually use self-hosted runners. So, I mean, you can use any platform. For example, even GitHub Actions allows you to use self-hosted. Uh, but we've definitely seen that enterprises, you know, that are security conscious tend to use self-hosted. Uh, one of the reasons is that when you use something like GitHub Enterprise Server, you know, you can't actually use the hosted one. And the other is that self-hosted actually gives you more control over your hosting environment. You can choose your uh, build image, with, you know, which can have uh, very few tools installed, the only ones that you need. And as you saw with the uh, you know, even network and file monitoring, you have more control. You can you can monitor all the jobs that are running without having to change each of the workflow files. So from that perspective, you know, you certainly have more control and that more control actually gives you more security on a self-hosted runner. Got it, got it. Really interesting. Probably some people that will debate that, but uh, I certainly uh, I, I certainly can't argue <laughs> with, with that there. Uh, we have another one here uh, that relates uh, to, 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 the, to the labs. Uh, when the call to attacker.com was blocked, did it stop the NPM install for just that malicious package, or did it stop the NPM install for all packages, even the legit ones? So basically, you know, did, I think, did the build fail completely? Yeah, so in this case, you know, npm install failed uh, because of the way the pre-install step was written. But you can certainly write a, a pre-install step in a way that will not cause the build to fail. So in this case, what Hardened Runner does is it blocks the outbound call, which is not in the allowed list, but it does not necessarily fail the build, right? So you could have, a, a you know, uh, scenario where the outbound call to the malicious endpoint is blocked, but the build still succeeds. Got it. Got it. Interesting. Um, uh, a couple more. How are we doing for time? Oh, we're coming close to the end, but maybe we'll fit in one more one more question here uh, before we do it. But uh, how, how do you perform security assessments for network services, e.g load balances, reverse proxies that are integral to part of the CI CD infrastructure. I'm not going to lie. This is a, this question is above my pay grade, but I'm hoping that you, uh, <laughs> you can, uh, you can make sense of this. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, for, for infrastructure, which is a uh, part of CI CD, you would typically look at it as infrastructure, which is part of your cloud, uh, you know, deployments itself. And it's, it's really important to give the same kind of, if not, you know, more importance to the CI CD infrastructure. A lot of, you know, a lot of times organizations tend to ignore that they just focus on their cloud deployments. Uh, but the way to perform security assessments for, you know, the CI CD infrastructure uh, sh should in large part be the same. Now there are certain things which are specific to CI CD, like, you know, the kind of solution we've built is specific to CIC, it's purpose built as, uh, you know, uh, EDR and networking solution. But for a lo lot of the other infra, you know, you would just apply the same principles that you apply to your cloud security. Excellent. Oh, that's a, uh, some great, great responses there. Um, I'm sure everyone found that valuable. Well, we've come to the end of, of this webinar. So I want to take a, a moment to, to really uh, thank you both for being here. Again, this was a fantastic webinar. This was actually the biggest webinar we've ever done with uh, nearly 1,400 people registered. So uh, I'm, very, I'm, I'm very happy to, to have done this. So thank you everyone uh, for participating. It has been uh, really special, uh, really great. Uh, and thank you again, Varan and, um, and Ashish for, for being here. I'm sure everyone really enjoyed it. 
the slides uh, are available if you if you contact us the recording will be available to everyone that's registered so you can go back and watch it again so one last time if we can all give a big thank you uh to our special guests from step security or and before i forget i have one other thing in the polls uh, there is a, another poll in there I just created saying, do you want more information from Step Security? If this was really interesting to you and you want to find out more, and particularly if you want to find out more from probably an enterprise level, please uh, answer that yes so that Step Security can actually reach out and uh, and provide you some more context and, and more personalized information. So in the poll section there, you can vote yes if you would like Step Security to, to, to reach out for you uh directly uh again so um and we already have a lot of people that have said yes to that so that's great uh that's great to see uh there is a no option there don't worry you don't need to click no uh <laughs> but uh, uh but uh yeah please please feel free to make sure that yeah, you do that so step security can reach out uh, and with that being said we've come to the end thank you all for participating thank you again veronish and ashish and i look forward to uh, hopefully doing another webinar with you again maybe we can get to 2000 next time so thank you thank you both thank you mackenzie thank you thanks everyone for joining